I live right near a major college here, a university here in New York, uh, and I can tell you, I've seen the kids coming back to school. At the same time, I also know a lot of kids aren't coming back. They're either doing it online or maybe taking the semester off. I'm wondering from your perspective here and the way that you normally sell your, your books, your services, uh, and other products, how are you sort of adjusting to the reality that either the level of students may not be what it was as opposed to last uh, summer, or that the way that they're going to be learning and being taught is going to be a lot different than what it was last summer? First off, thanks for having me, Romaine and uh, Caroline Taylor. And Taylor, those are encouraging words that you just uh, reported, and it's consistent with, with what we're seeing. No doubt it's a very, very tough time, a challenging time to be either a student or faculty or part of a school. Um, what we're doing is we're supporting all the schools that we serve. We have approximately 1,400 schools across the United States, 800 physical campuses and about 600 or so virtual uh, schools where we actually provide course materials on a virtual basis. Um, and. Uh, our, our business is really to provide the most affordable, most accessible, and the best education experience we can for students, which obviously, uh, you know, it's all about adapting. Mm -hmm. You know, they're adapting as schools, the students are adapting, and we've adapted. And fortunately, we put in a strategy about three years ago aimed at digital, including uh, self-study guides, self-study products for schools, uh, for schools to either distribute to their students or we distribute it directly or we distribute it through partnerships. We just recently announced a, a partnership with Vital Source to distribute our, our Bartleby suite of uh, digital services, which helps students in a remote environment or if they're on campus. But importantly, adapting, being flexible, but continuing on with your education experience is what we're all about, trying to help students do that. Of course, you had the blocks in place to be able to focus on the digital part of your business. But I'm interested, it must be very hard as a leader of this business when you're having to furlough people, particularly in the retail side of the business. How much do you think this is going to be a permanent shift to a lot more focus on e-commerce? Well, it's, it's a permanent shift, Caroline, in, in some respects. But I think that I really believe that next year, uh, presuming there's a virus and therapeutics that, that uh, make it uh, less costly and more more safe to go back to school responsibly, I think that there's going to be a very pent up demand for social interaction and to be close to each other. And so I think that part, that residential education experience is always going to be there. And I think it's going to come back strong next year. In the meantime, though, what we're doing, as I said, is we're providing uh, self-study tools. We're fulfilling out of our advanced distribution center in Missouri. That's been running three shifts since March so that students can get their physical books as well as their digital material, um, you know, and work at home or work wherever they are remotely and same for, same for uh, faculty. So uh, our Bartleby, check out Bartleby.com, you'll see what we do there. You check out BNED.com, you'll see what we do as a company. And we're really kind of a one-stop shop for physical and digital, as well as a virtual delivery or on campus. Um, your, your comment about e-commerce, um, we just released a new e-commerce system, great timing, wish we had it six months ago, but it's uh, not just uh, academic courseware, we also sell a lot of general merchandise. So um, obviously that's something we're keeping an eye on uh, as well. But uh, our focus on courseware and, and helping students work remotely because students have struggled, as you know, mm -hmm. uh, we did a large survey of students. We serve over 6 million students and over 53% of them said that working remotely is really impairing their academic confidence. And not only impairing their academic confidence, but the longer we work from home and the more that schools stay shut down, the data suggests that the longer the, the wealth gap and the divide between the haves and the have nots widens. And this really is putting those who are most vulnerable at, again, the most disadvantaged. Through your efforts to help uh, the work from home, the study from home environment, what can you say about any gains that you can give to those who are most vulnerable and who are the most struggling during this time? Well, one thing we're doing, uh, I guess, Taylor, is, is we're providing huge discounts by packaging courseware into inclusive access programs. It can save students up to 50 percent, 40 to 50 percent. And that's important. I think access is extremely important, too. And through our our first day and first day complete programs, which are inclusive access program, that helps to level the playing field on socioeconomic issues by making sure that 
all students have all of their courseware on the first day of, of school. Um, there are other issues like access to broadband and that type of thing that I've dealt with in prior lives in the cable industry, um, which we need to focus on as a, as a larger community, no doubt. But uh, we're doing everything we can. I think schools are doing everything we can, even the so-called elite schools, to make sure that those that are less advantaged are getting the opportunity to get that same kind of an education. But, but you're, you're right, that it is affecting the gap. There's no doubt we have to pay attention to that.